You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Silicon Valley After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show, it's AfterBuzz TV's Silicon Valley After Show. Hey, it's After Buzz TV, and we are the Silicon Valley After Show. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the second episode. Quick intros, I'm Jeffrey Masters. I'm JB Zimmerman. And I'm Sophie Shalacy. Hey, guys. Sophie will be here the rest of the time, and we're Yay. very excited to have you. Welcome. Thanks. I'm excited to be yeah. here. Yeah. So what you guys think of tonight's episode? I liked it. Um, a lot more happened, I think, in than the first episode. We had to establish a lot of the characters last time, so we... Got a little bit more down to business right away. Yeah, we got the story on yeah, a little exactly. more. This is where we're really going to see where these characters are going. I like that it, it revealed a little bit more about everybody. We're starting to really see more of their traits and more of their quirks this yeah. time around. Especially the guys in the house. That mm-hmm. was nice to see like the interview session. Yes. Like, what do you definitely. do? Because the viewers would like to know as well. <laughs> yes, definitely. And I think that was good for maybe some of the more technologically savvy people that are watching too, because they might understand that a little bit more than, say, you and I would. I, um, I absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the lingo went over my head, but it was definitely yeah. um, very reminiscent of the office space scenes with the, both the Bobs, where they basically had to defend their own jobs. You know, I never caught the office space bug when it was on TV. Really? Have you seen it? I have not. Oh, no. <laughs> I have to admit. I That's one not. of those things you're not supposed to admit. You fake okay, it. Okay, roll fake camera. It take it make back. It. Rewind. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll just take some dirty tweets and we'll move on. Um, <laughs> I was kind of surprised by Peter Gregory's change of, not heart, but like disposition in this episode. I just expected him to know what he was getting into and to realize that Pied Pepper is not a established, like, well-working, oiled machine right now. And I was just kind of surprised by that sure i don't know how how involved peter gregory is in the day-to-day necessarily at least from the first episode the feeling that i got was really that his assistant monica was kind of running the show we didn't yeah i mean she just seemed she was totally like lurking behind him and like jumping in all the time and um she was really kind of taking the reins i felt like we didn't see as much of that in this episode but um i have a feeling that that's going to come back around are you saying that you think he's like the idea guy and she like gets things done or i think she's the the idea i mean let's be real she's the woman (laughs) the woman of the show the yes you go amanda well with personality types i definitely agree i think he is so smart almost for too much for his own good and that basically makes him so unrelatable as a person he was very awkward in that meeting sort of where he was supposed to be whispering to her blatantly saying it out loud where they all could hear yeah Uh, i thought also he had like the lack of eye contact i didn't know if the actor was trying to hint at asperger's perhaps for the character i think so i mean i think that a lot of people in that industry are sort of that brain wiring where they're so technically savvy that they lack those kind of social skills yeah um now, did they have a, uh, I don't, I was trying to remember Peter Gregory from the last episode and the way he inter- interacted with people. And it wasn't as apparent, his like weird social quirks as last time. And it just kind of surprised me. Yeah, he was definitely a little bit socially awkward in the first episode. Um, you could tell even in the way that he would interrupt and, and certain things that he said. And I mean, even going back to the Asperger's thing, like that was one of the first things that they brought up. Like one of the first jokes oh, of was the pilot it? was about Asperger's. Yeah, um, they were talking about an Asperger's dating site. And um, oh, I, I, I think there's shades of it. I, I actually rewatched it today. That's why I remember. Okay. But um, I think there's shades of that in a lot of the characters, honestly. I know, it's so cliche, yeah. but I mean, it's sure. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I just would, I was, uh, one of the things I was most excited for was to see him in like a hands-on nature, developing and nurturing this young company and taking it to a like, massive global scale that he mentioned. And now I'm kind of, I feel let down, like that's not going to happen. Right, I think that might be too easy. I mean, I was expecting that the way the last episode ended. But I think they wanted to make the conflict, wanted to make the stakes higher. Um, it really, 
is interesting to see them sort of struggle in that way where they really have no idea what's going on. I mean, he right. felt great about turning that $10 million down, but what is the result of that? What of is, course. What does he face now that he did that? I He's mean, in way over his head. Exactly. Right, which way opened over. the door perfectly for Jared to yes. come in. Jared Dunn. <laughs> Jared. The old <laughs> the assistant. Ghost Get it Apple. done. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that character. I think he adds like a nice, like the like preppy nerd. You know, mm-hmm. like the buttoned up. He clearly has a little bit of like PTSD from his former boss. Right. <laughs> I kind of love that, you know, he's the business guy. He's like the straight laced button up kind of guy that they bring in. Yet he's still so awkward. Like the first thing he does is come in and he bows and he goes, whoops, that was weird. I laughed so hard when he said that just because I thought it was so funny. Yeah. <laughs> that he's like, he's the business guy and he's still, you know, just like the rest of them. I know, they just find Silicon Valley. Just they just right. like hibernate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he kept talking about his appearance too. And I was like, why are you doing that? <laughs> yeah. It's like he doesn't know what to comment on. So he's like, you think I look weird, right? I'm skinny, <laughs> pale. <laughs> I really liked his character. I mean, it was so positive, almost to an awkward level. And it sort of brought me back to, I was a pr- uh, personal assistant a few years ago and just asking for permission for everything going to the bathroom being so nice so greeting everybody yeah the bowing you just mentioned <laughs> uh it's just so funny to see that um personality type so exaggerated yeah totally and i I'm think sure you've all been the assistant gig definitely <laughs> definitely and for someone as high profile as you know the position he just left you know you would definitely have to do that yeah totally that the, i those assistant jobs it's funny that he still he was playing such a major part as like the business manager for lack of a better word and yet he still was treating himself like the assistant i thought that was interesting Mm -hmm. and then the other assistant monica i don't understand like i mean we were saying i don't understand her exact role yet in the company is she an assistant or is she like a colleague cohort i don't know that that's been specified yet it definitely hasn't been specified yet, but I, I suspect it runs a lot deeper than what they're showing us right now. I think that she is kind of the brains behind the operation there. Yeah. yeah. And I was reading online that it's intentional that there's not many female characters, especially ones like in control, but she just had such a, I mean, she was just reacting throughout the meeting. I don't know that she said like more than like five lines, you know? Yeah. This time she definitely was silent. She, I got the strong but silent vibe from her this time <laughs> around. Um, I'm just going to keep rooting for her all season <laughs> because she's the only woman. I know. <laughs> so sorry, guys. Okay. We talked briefly about right. this last time, but give yeah. us a female perspective. Ooh, Do you yes. think that she's going to fall in love with somebody? I think she has to. Right. Uh I mean, I wish that she didn't have to, but I think that that's just the nature of television and that she is, you know, she's the one female. Unless they're going to bring another female on, which I don't, I haven't read anywhere that there's anyone else coming into the fold, but I I could totally be wrong. I don't think we can count uh, Mocha (laughs) Chino. Yes. (laughs) I hope she's not out. She's on IMDb as coming back for another episode. Ooh. So Excellent. Interesting, interesting to see how. Definitely. I like how they use her character to, again, reference how there is a lack of females just in Palo Alto. I mean, in the beginning scene, she when everybody kind of left her alone, she said, oh, God, I hate Palo Alto. <laughs> just to kind of reinforce the fact that there aren't really any women in the industry. Yeah. I um That was weird for me. I think the show... It's, um, I, don't, I can't tell what it's trying to be yet. Is it trying to be, I was reading it like before, uh, when it first got picked up, it was a parody, it's satire. Mm-hmm. And yet it's having a super realistic uh, technology and moments. And yet some super really just odd and weird scenes, like with like the dim lighting, the erotic lighting, I believe it was right, called. Yes. <laughs> I, I just, I can't put like a name yet on what the show's voice is trying to be, but I think it succeeds for me in the little, like the weirder sections. I like, actually read it categorically as a dark comedy earlier today which I was like I thought dark implied death yeah but I don't know usually I guess it's just kind of more things it's more off kilter I guess like what you're saying yeah like Fight Club I think it was like these like epitome of dark comedy Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah I'm just trying to figure out I but um when the weirder moments, I think it right. separates itself a little bit because if not, it, like we get the Big Bang Theory comparisons, but it's not like a thirty-minute like you know slapstick exactly. sitcom. It's a lot of subtle humor. I think we would get a lot more of it if we were a little in, more in tune to the industry. But yeah. even still, I I think there's a lot of um, subtle humor to be seen in the interactions. Everybody being so awkward. 
yeah. and sort of being too smart for their own good. And I think a lot of the jokes don't play. Not a lot of the jokes. I'm sorry. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Careful. Oh, I'm getting stoned. Um, no, like with stones, not. Like, yeah. uh, <laughs> oh God. Rewind. Rewind. I'm just gonna. I think that the some of the jokes that they're playing are just a little more cliche, like the Siri jokes. You know, series been around for four years and TV shows have already covered it. Right. So when they're doing like the Siri can't figure out what he's trying to say, like, I don't know, I've just said I didn't get the laugh that I think it wanted. Right. I think they might be trying to go global with how technical they get and kind of balancing that out with trying to get more general audiences that may not know anything technologically yeah. at all. Um, they may have overcompensated with that because I definitely felt that was a little dated as well. They definitely have to balance the audiences, the right. people like us who don't. Half of it's going right over our heads, and then <laughs> there know. are people like you know, my boyfriend is is a computer guy, and he gets all of it. And oh, so sometimes great. I have to pause it and right. ask him. I'm like, what are they talking about? Yeah, we were saying last <laughs> time that like Silicon Valley was like uh, aimed for Silicon Valley, and we we're like, just broaden out a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't. I would like to see perhaps that. You know, I just like some. Let me just keep making noises. <laughs> <laughs> I think if there is a relationship that comes to fruition this season, I think that will bring another dynamic, yeah. another level of humor in the male female interactions. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm trying to think about how it's successful in other shows. And I thought it was successful during the interview scene when they were arguing about like X and X10 or 10Xs. <laughs> right. Clearly, it went over my head. <laughs> but like that was like funny and clever and cute. I'm sure. glad that they um, tried to find a space for Big Head to fit in. That's his character name, Big Head. What? <laughs> um, I was surprised that he actually went, though, with the other company. Plus, he seems to have a normal-sized head, I think. Uh, I wrote that down. <laughs> his head is not that big. Well, it's a play on his name, we discovered at the end. Or did that go over your head, too? No, I wrote his name out. Nelson Baghetti. Baghetti. Uh, big, big Head. Big Head. Big Head. Baghetti. If you mumble it. <laughs> Nelson. Close a little bit enough. of a stretch. I guess Nelson we wouldn't fit it, in though. the world. I don't of course, know. yeah. But no. $600,000 a year. Not too shabby. Not, not too bad. bad. Big head. Uh, remember my first 600000 No 10 million, but <laughs> yeah. I probably would have taken it. And now clearly they have a guy on the inside. Yeah. Exactly. Very helpful spy. plot point. Yeah, and that was very exciting for me to have like competition, like speed this up. Definitely. That yes. raises the stakes immensely. And I'm so happy that it kind of gives more of a timeline of, They've got to get this going right now. Yeah. It's interesting, too, like the uh, competing Indians. Just kidding. Can I say that? Danashi and Ali <laughs> on yes. either side, just like plugging away. <laughs> I like Danashi. I think he's one of my favorites. Yes. <laughs> I like him. I like Guilfoyle a lot, too. His just blatant negativity is, is, I think, a lot of the black comedy that we were talking about. I like his humor a lot. I think he's funny. Yeah. It's very, like, dry. Yeah. I... Yeah. I like T.J. Miller's character just because how can you not like T.J. Miller's character? It's yeah. just, what, Ehrlich? Is that how you say it? Ehrlich. Yes, Ehrlich. 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 I like him. He's just loud and over the top. And I just like T.J. Miller in general. So It's what a great do? breakout role for him. Exactly. Yes. I think it's going to blow him up. I think so, too. I mean, you guys discussed this last week, but, you know, we've seen him in so many things in these small supporting roles. I think now the mainstream is really going to get to see him. And I think it's too compared to these other characters that are a little more nerdier and like buttoned up and he gets to just like run the stage. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. He definitely gets a lot of of wee wee, I think, with how much fun he can have with the role. He's a larger than life presence. He is. And I think it's like necessary in these like smaller than life characters. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's just kind of like the way it goes. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, he's the only character that strikes me as having charisma. I mean, he talked a lot about how you should act and knowing he definitely has the most confidence by far of anyone. Yeah, I agree. I really like Richard a lot, but something about his character, I mean, there's people like this all over that they don't show like as much emotion. Mm -hmm. And I think it really works for the character. Like he's angry, he's happy, and his face doesn't move that much. Mm -hmm. But I worry that like as the audience, even though it's like an honest choice, like the audience is gonna lose interest in that. So it'd be interesting to it's see subtle. how it goes. Yeah. It's very subtle. It's just, yeah, it is absolutely. And I hate making the comparison each week to uh, the Big Bang Theory, but they get away with it because they're going so overboard. I wonder how Silicon Valley will handle it when they're clearly not going to go that extreme. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see. It will be. I think he is starting to get it a little bit more with a business savvy end. 
Um, he was He's such, not there yet. Yeah, he's, he has a long way <laughs> to go. He's pretty That's far off. Sure. Yeah, sure. and starting with forming an actual company so he could right. have his, get his money. That was, <laughs> I was like, oh my God, it's not incorporated. <laughs> yeah. So now the money is just frozen. It doesn't exist. Right. right. Until, I don't know what that process is like, but it's got, it's got to be lengthy. I kind of loved how his first stop was Wikipedia when he had to form Ooh, a business yes, plan. Exactly. That's that something I would do. <laughs> if I didn't know, if I was totally out of my depth in something, I think that's my generation too, is like Wikipedia is your yeah. first stop. I Google image examples. So it's like yes. cover letter and I like read other people's cover letters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Resume and I like see what looks good and what looks bad. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. That was like one exactly. of the biggest laughs of We're the so episode. used to Very going funny. going to the internet right for everything we need to know. I mean, YouTube has how-to videos of everything that exists. It was kind of fun to see him, who we think is such a genius, creating this perfect algorithm, doing the same thing that we would do. Like, what is a business plan? Yeah, totally. that's Something a really good point. So simple, he would still have to do the same thing. It humanizes him a lot. Exactly. Not that he wasn't human before, but I think it, it makes him a lot more relatable. Exactly. Fact, like, I wouldn't know how to do a business plan either. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy. And then <laughs> just bringing friends. in like the strong relationship with Big Head hearing like the words like best friend it just puts it into such a like different context well we didn't know that they had that history no. until this episode yeah so that was helpful and now i think we can trust big head on the inside yeah that's you know? an interesting no new like plot twist mm -hmm. dum 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 <laughs> it's a good thing that richard chose to keep him because if when he before he knew that um big head took the job if that had gone the other way he probably wouldn't have had that spy in the inside. I know. I was kind of surprised though that everybody else in the house turned on him, saying he is like the master of no trades. Right. I think it's a, a bit about the greed. I mean, everybody in Silicon Valley, I imagine, is so power hungry about getting something that makes a million dollars or a billion dollars. I think that's how it is in that industry. That right. Those people, at least the people that I know that work in that capacity, are are quick to tell you if you're dumb. They're very quick to say. Right. You don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> no. or I'm smarter than you, just because that's how it is. It's they think it's the truth, and they're just gonna say it. Yeah, it goes back to like the people skills. They don't right. mince words. <laughs> well, it's yeah. so extremely competitive down there. They don't make any friends along the way. They're yeah. in it to win it, and that's it. That's so interesting. I guess that's like why in the initial meeting with Peter Gregory in this episode, it's like the silence. Like someone's right. gotta say something. And who like, what was the first word? Like I'm excited. Yeah. Should we say more? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Should we transfer some news and gossip, perhaps? Let's do it. After Buzz TV News. So last week, obviously, was the premiere, and all eyes were on the ratings to see right. how it would do had the Game of Thrones lead up, so that always bodes well. Um, but it actually did really, really well on its own. It uh, was HBO's biggest half hour premiere since 2009's Hung. Let me look up the numbers right here. Um, an average of 2 million viewers. That's really strong. Yeah, that's really strong for Especially them. Especially really for exciting. comedy. Yeah. yeah. Um, better than Veep. Veep's premiere did not do as well. Really? Oh, that's my show. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. I think we never know what's going to happen. Especially for like HBO 30 minute comedy, like that's right. super strong. Mm -hmm. I hope that keeps up. I guess we'll see next we'll week see next something week. to look oh. forward to. <laughs> How does it stand up? I know. What are you guys most looking forward to next week? Any predictions? I want to see more of my girl. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Can I guess now that they've initially started out by being like, look, there's no women. She's only in three minutes. They can then bring it out. They've made their statement. Yes. Maybe we will see more of her. I think we're going to see more of her. I don't know if we're going to bring out any romance just yet. I think we've got a ways to wait before that happens. But um, I'm yeah. hoping by next episode, we start to see more of her in action, um, kind of running the show over there. We, I, mean, I think both of you both are convinced that she's in charge. Is that correct? I don't think she's in charge per se. I think she does a lot more than a normal assistant would. I think she's basically a VP to if um, Peter Gregory is the president, she basically handles everything else. Yeah. I'll put it this way. I don't think Peter Gregory would be Peter Gregory without her. Okay. And her role is unspecified as of now, right? The title, like job title? Or job is she assistant? Job title is unspecified. Interesting. 
What's her saying? I just like her because she sits silently and you could tell that she's like thinking and processing and has like opinions but is right. not voicing them. <laughs> yes. Like women should not. <laughs> An example hey. for everybody. Ooh, strategy. Danger. It's called strategy, sir. Oh, I know. <laughs> I definitely you? think she do, does know a lot more than she lets on. I think she is processing a lot more. She gets what they're trying to do more, I think, than Peter Gregory. He is probably so used to everything coming perfect to him. Yeah. You know, perfect business plans, everything laid out like ABC, that when, you know, these guys just have an idea and and – he doesn't really understand why they don't have everything else ironed out. He probably is so, you know, strict with everything he does. He doesn't even get not having a yeah. plan. And I guess that I was so shocked that he was not there to nurture them and to help them create this as a business. Because if he wants 5% of a company, he has to make sure that it's the biggest thing ever. So he gets his 5% is a massive amount. And yet here it is, if he doesn't like give them any sort of help, he's going to end up with, you know, $30,000. And that's great, but like not when you're Peter Gregory. Right. I think he can afford to lose the money that he's sending over there. Good but point. that said, of course you want it to succeed, and of course you want to make yeah. more money off of it. Ooh. All right, guys, <laughs> we're going to continue this conversation on social media. Where can they find you, please? I am at Sophie Schlacy on Ooh. Twitter and Instagram. I am at JB underscore Zimmerman on Twitter and on Instagram as well. And I tweet from Jeff Masters one We'll see you next week. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you, See you later. later. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.